Okay, this is the old Massey Ferguson 275. I spent $7,000 for it second hand and it wasn't worth it. Had a lot of repairs to do on it. Uh, the, I believe the battery box was under the steering column. They later put it uh, in front of the radiator. And what I did is I hollowed it out a little bit more took the cup by taking the covers off of it and uh, I put two deep cycle bat marine batteries in it instead. Uh, the marine batteries, if you double them up, they will, in, in my circumstances, they usually last for about six to seven years rather than replacing a battery every single year and that adds up to a lot of savings. So just on that alone, it will be helpful. After that, I've got an old uh, 5,000, 10,000 watt power inverter that I bought many years ago has got a special on it. And if it doesn't work, then it's still worth going out and buying the 3,000, 6,000 watt power inverter. Uh, I, I wouldn't buy another 5,000, 10,000 again. The three to six is everything that I need for out on the farm. It'll run any of the power tools. It'll run a small air compressor. And uh, you're better off with just two deep cycle batteries because they only last as long as the weakest battery. If you have three on it and one battery goes dead, the, the cells go dead, it will actually short out your other cells. And it doesn't really, you can add more and more batteries, but as soon as the first battery goes dead, it kills every battery in the line. So that's, what, that's why I don't go more than two, why I don't want to go more than two. Uh, that's why it's better to bump your voltage up to 24 volts if you need two batteries. However, they didn't do it that way. Yeah, it would have pinched the blade. Glad I used the screwdrivers. Okay, lost my wrench, so I'll go over this real quick. If you lose the wrenches that fit in here, you don't have to have them. And then when you put a new blade in it, tighten them up by hand, and then just put some pressure on it and that's all you need. You don't have to tighten it up any further than that. I'm um, just push this edge up underneath it so I got the right height here or right length that way. That way I don't have to cut it again in theory. And well, I'll be cutting off the sides to make it fit in. But this lip here coming up will be a good water edge to keep the water going off that direction rather than into the tractor. Or, if I put anything up here, it should stop stuff from rolling back up inside the tractor. So, I'm using 3 16 rod, a little bit bigger than an eighth. And, or 3 30 seconds, rather. And 60 13s. The 60 has less strength, but it gets through rust easier. And the 13, I don't know, cleans it up a little bit better. And I'm using straight AC. I'm not using any DC on this one since it's flat. Get a hotter weld. Okay, that should tack it in. Let all the, since I've warmed this thing up, warmed up my uh, welder, I'm going to turn it off, let it sit for about 15 minutes, and get all the moisture out. And this is all tacked up so I can take these off. And I'll come back in about 15 minutes. Okay, for this one I just came out because these these pieces here aren't straight, they're at a slight angle. So I came out and marked them and 
marked them again, cut them out. This one here, I need to be almost an inch higher. So I'm going to mark this one at, there's 13, I'll mark it at 13 and a half. Cut this piece off. I'm going to flip it around so that it, well, no, I'm just going to bring it straight over this way and make sure that from here to this angle here is 13 and a half inches. Okay, this one is a different grinder and it actually has a grinding wheel on it rather than a cutoff wheel. And all I'm doing is taking off all the rough edges and I'm going to round this little corner off. Good reason to buy cheap angle grinders is I always end up having something else to put on one. This one is a sanding disc. I'm not welding anything up yet. I'm just getting this length right. I put a bunch of stuff underneath here to get it the right height. Two pieces of steel and a small piece of wood. This piece right here. Here, I can weld this plate on. There it's spot welding from there I can just weld it on up. Okay, first thing to do is clean this thing up and get grease all over the contacts. And what I'm doing is I'm hooking up this one here on the ground first. At least it better be. Let's confirm that that's the, the ground wire. And it goes to here. And let's see here, going this way. So it'll be going in like that. And that thing's too big. So there's a cheat for that. And get it as tight as you can. And from here I'm going to take grease and I'm going to grease all of this these things do corrode over time and it's a good idea to have grease all over them and that's not just any grease that's dilithic 
dielectric grease only, the same thing you use on spark plugs. It's usually a good idea to take these apart and grease them up too, but I'm not going to today. Okay, I've only got about half the threads here done because I have this other ground wire going to the tractor, so I can't really tighten it up too tight. But let's see what we can do. I'm also leaving this off until I get the hots completed, less likely of being uh, shocked. So I'm going to hook it up to uh, the positive first, these to the positive, and then I'll hook these positive directly up to the batteries, and they're towards the middle, so I'll probably put on gloves just to uh, finish it off. Make sure I got the right wires. That's always a helpful thing. Okay, you notice I'm wearing gloves because I uh, hooked up the last two cables. And because I'm using two batteries, as soon as you hook up one cable, uh, the other cable, both the cable and the uh, other end of the battery are hot. So I was wearing gloves just to make sure I didn't get zapped. So I'm going to turn it on, plug it in, and... I now have 110 power anywhere the tractor is. One of the nicer things to have. 